The Chinese government is really, really stupid. I'm not even joking. It's mad dumb. Cue the clown music. The Chinese government is one of the stupidest, dumbest, most idiotic leaderships I've ever seen in my entire life. Yet somehow they think their bullshit is going to keep working on you. They think you're going to eat it up. They think you're going to believe the lies that they're forcing down your throat because they're really amping it up. They're really, really going after you as an English speaking person in the rest of the world. And they want you to make sure that you buy the new narrative that is constantly shifting and making sure that the CCP, the Chinese government, is the, the clear winner here in this ordeal. You ever walk around just having that thing in the back of your mind thinking, I have a big ass bulge in my pocket. Well, that big ass bulge is probably your bulging ass wallet. And that wallet is very uncomfortable, very unsightly, and let me tell you, it's a thing of the past. Welcome to Extra Wallets. One push of the button, your cards fan out. It's very, very thin, very sleek, and it's the only wallet I've ever been complimented on. It's pretty much the coolest wallet you could ever have. And I'm very, very happy to say that they're a sponsor of this channel. If you go to shop.extra.com slash 86 and you use the code lawai86 at checkout, you're going to get up to 40% off Extra Wallets this Christmas sale. Make sure you use this link, shop.extra.com slash 86 and make sure you use that discount code lawai86 and get that discount because this is going to be one of the best gifts you could give to anybody. I promise you. Thanks to Extra and thanks to you guys for supporting the channel. What's actually happening right now is that massive hundreds of thousands of Chinese people were expressing some sort of dissent, some distrust, some dissatisfaction with the Chinese government. This was unprecedented. This was like the craziest thing that's happened since Tiananmen Square. There were people rising up calling for the downfall of the Chinese government within China, right? What the Chinese government did was simultaneously within China's borders is to make sure that anybody that was involved was either interrogated, uh, harassed, tortured, or disappeared. They used the COVID tracking QR code on the phone to find every single person that was involved in the protest. Anybody that even walked near the protest, they went to go find them. And instead of rolling tanks through Tiananmen Square, what they did was a silent massacre. The secret police went around and knocked on people's doors, North Korea style, and made people get punished for what they did. Because guess what? You can't protest in China unless it's a state-sponsored protest, and it's against something that the Chinese government wants the people to be against like Japan, for example. Now, simultaneously, they wanted to scare the shit out of their own people to make sure that people don't protest in the future. But at the same time, they want you as an English-speaking person outside of China to think that the protests were allowed. And then everything that came out of the protests is because the Chinese government is so benevolent and the protests worked and China is a very free country. It's a really, really sick and twisted game because what's happening now is that they want you to believe that these protests were allowed by the government, and then now, really arbitrary, horrible, zero COVID policy is going to go away because those protests succeeded. It's really, really messed up. Look at this news clip, for God's sakes. Hey, Kelly, well, those protests may have worked over the weekend. Multiple cities relaxing COVID-19 restrictions. In Shanghai specifically, residents do not have to present a negative COVID test to enter an outdoor venue. Oh, really, MSNBC? So those protests ended up working and those Chinese stocks are rallying. Guess it's a great time to invest in China. No. The smoke and mirror campaign that the Chinese government's running right now to make sure that you believe the Chinese government's narrative is not going to work if you pay attention to this video. Because I want to highlight the stuff that they're going to do from now on. <laughs> I want you to be prepared 
And I want you to be ready for the Chinese propaganda that's going to come out through your own sources of media. Because it looks like Western media is kind of buying this up. It all stems from the stock market. These old people that really hedged their bets on China, that really thought China was the next big thing, are very disappointed to see that it's not. It turns out that China is a massive paper tiger that is actually slowly collapsing right in front of our eyes. You don't financially back a country that has propelled one leader into such a strong man position that he has made his entire identity about zero COVID pandemic prevention. I mean, this is a guy that locked up for three years, locked up his entire populace and made them medical slaves, basically. You don't paralyze an entire economy just to make some ridiculous principle like zero COVID your identity. You don't do that and get away with it. I mean, the rest of the world that wants to invest in your country as a manufacturing hub is going to see that it's led by an absolute maniac. There's basically Kim Jong-un with more people and more money. But then again, Maybe people are stupid. Maybe they do believe this because you see clips like this on the news come out. I mean, we're talking about the country here. When the protest broke out about a fire that happened in a city called Urumqi, what happened was they had protesters on a road called Urumqi Road in Shanghai to show solidarity. And instead of trying to capitulate to the protesters, they arrested everyone and then removed the sign. They thought if they removed the sign of the road, then people wouldn't know where to go or the representation of the protest would be gone. That's what we're talking about here. When people busted out sheets of paper, blank sheets of paper, because they can't write anything on it. They don't want to get arrested, right? The Chinese government's response, and I kid you not, was to ban paper. They banned paper. Before you think this is ridiculous... In many cities around China, like in Shanghai or Beijing, if you tried to go on the internet and order a 4 size paper, they had banned it. They wouldn't ship it to you. They made a paper company go out and say that they didn't support the protesters. I'm not joking. Well, last I checked, in massive amounts of the country, there's still lockdowns. There's still COVID testing. Uh, gosh. And all of this stuff is just like it was for the past three years. So what are they talking about? Well, what they're hoping is that people in some areas that were kind of like really had a lot of unrest and really wanted the zero COVID lockdown, arbitrary detention stuff to go away are satisfied. It means they're not going to go out and protest anymore, right? At the same time, they want the rest of the world to say, oh, look, uh, China is opening up again. They're getting rid of that horrible zero COVID policy. So let's invest in China again. They've done this before and it's all been a lie. And then everybody freaks out and invests in China and says everything's going to get better. And then they watch their stock tank. The central government's really trying its best to make sure that people don't go out and protest again because it was really, really devastating for China's image. And yeah, they can take care of that amount of protesters for sure. They can arrest them behind the scenes and make them disappear. But imagine if it was 10 times the amount of people. And imagine if this time the pandemic workers and the police and the army was actually backing the people. It would not be very good for the central government, right? So they don't want to take any chances. So I'm not kidding you. They actually have some medical experts that are saying, well, you know what? And I called this ages ago. They said that not only did COVID mutate to the point where it's not dangerous anymore, but now it should actually just be called the flu. Now they want to rename it so that people don't get confused and scared. They have previously said that this current strain of COVID is incredibly deadly and ravaging the entire world. But now they're saying that it's not. And you see how this was never about COVID in the first place. This was quite literally a control mechanism for the people. They turned on a dime when all of a sudden their leadership was threatened because of these ridiculous policies. I'm not even joking. The country that is declaring the end of the pandemic is the same country that built their entire economy on zero COVID. Their entire identity is to be the only country that doesn't have COVID while the rest of the world suffers in agony and dies. Now, of course, everyone knows that most people have kind of been over COVID for ages now and nobody cares anymore. But what they tell their own people is that COVID is so deadly and horrible and everyone in the world died. And in China, you're so lucky to have like a daddy government, like the Chinese government to protect you because we're the only government that could keep COVID out. And then simultaneously saying it's over, but then having an entire economy based on testing. Over 1% of China's GDP is COVID testing. <laughs> You have thousands, countless, unbelievable amounts of these areas around China that are built up with like containers, basically shipping containers that are quarantine facilities. 
and they're basically prisons. They're like airlocked prisons for people to go when they have COVID. The pandemic workers or the cops will go to your house and bring you and ship you off to these places. They filled up entire cities. They filled up entire highway systems with thousands and thousands of these containers to lock people up when they get COVID. If the pandemic's over, then what are you gonna do with the hundreds of thousands of containers? Maybe over millions of these things. What are you gonna do with them, right? China for the past three years has been ruining their economy. We've watched China go from this kind of burgeoning superpower that's making its wealth by stealing IP and kind of dominating markets around the world to a really quickly collapsing country. It's a country that has watched company after company leave. It's watched so much investment pour out because of the absolute ridiculousness of this zero COVID policy. In fact, there's a 40% reduction in exports right now. The Chinese economy is in horrible shape and it tried to replace it with zero COVID stuff. It's like the person leading the country doesn't understand anything. He doesn't understand one ounce of how China got to where it is. When Xi Jinping came into power, the groundwork was already laid. The economy was on the up. It was one of the quickest growing countries in the entire world. And all he had to do was keep that going, but he didn't understand the fundamentals. I think he actually drank his own Kool-Aid. I think the people in power in the central government have drank their own Kool-Aid to the point where they don't understand the real truth. And the real truth is that China is wealthy now because of foreign investment. China was the manufacturing hub of the world and countries around the world like the US decided that stuff would be made in China from now on. That is the only reason that China is where it is today. That paired with the fact that Chinese people are smart and hardworking. It's not because the Chinese government decided to lift them out of poverty. The zero poverty, kind of like this insinuation that there's no more poverty in China. By the way, there's tons of poverty in China. It's a very poor country, largely. Is this fantasy concocted by the leadership that's currently in power? And they've really, I think, believed their own lies to the point where they think that they're the only driver of economic growth, that the only reason China is growing economically is because they decided to allow the economy to grow, not because of all these companies that invest and kind of fuel the economy in China. So now you're seeing China's economy tank, absolutely tank. All these companies are leaving. And then the Chinese government's so confused as to why the economy is not doing well. Gee, you think if you lock people up for three years, force foreign investment out, create massive xenophobia and racism throughout the country that hates everyone outside of China, promotes Han nationalism and Han Chinese racial identity into an ethnostate status, you think maybe that might have an effect on your economy. But it certainly looks like the government doesn't even understand that fundamental principle. The past leadership in China was brutal and awful, right? The past two leaders, Hu Jintao and uh, Jiang Zemin, the guy that just died, they were awful people. They're really the people that just continued the brutality of the Chinese central government, but at the same time understood that if China was going to have some semblance of wealth, they needed to rely on other countries to trade with. It seems like the current leadership in China just doesn't even understand that basic principle. You would think that people in Chinese leadership would understand that to keep this facade of China going, like to keep people happy within China and to keep the rest of the world placated and continuing to trade with China, and then simultaneously be able to get away with whatever you want, your bullshit human rights atrocities in China, you could have just kept going the way it was going. Like nobody was going to stop it. You have people like me that are very, very opposed to that kind of stuff, but we wouldn't even have a voice if this wasn't the case. The central government in China has taken China from like this background character that could have gotten away with being the global leader without even trying to running itself into the ground. It's almost like the current leadership took the airplane controls and then pointed the plane nosedive into the ground. It almost looks like the freaking Chinese government's a CIA operative to ruin the country. It's the biggest cell phone I've ever seen in my life. It's one of the stupidest points of history I've ever seen. And it's completely unnecessary. It's almost unbelievable. But really, China's on a path to destroying itself and no one even has to do anything about it. I... Ay, ay, 
Hey. If you guys want to see a very hilarious, entertaining, but also informative weekly show about China news, I do a live show every single Friday called The China Show. Go over to The China Show. Make sure you're subscribed. You guys are going to absolutely love it. Basically, it's a two-hour show where all of the highlights of what happened in China's news or what China's trying to hide from the rest of the world is put out there right for you to see. We commentate on it. We translate stuff. We have people on the ground in China that are giving us information. It's one of the best places to get caught up on what's happening in China. So I really would like to see you there. Thanks.